This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. The topic of today's news feature is medical marijuana as a new dispensary opens in the Hazleton area. Welcome everyone, get warm, get comfortable, and get ready for some local information. I'm Ken Carr and I appreciate you being here. The COVID-19 vaccine is making its way to long-term care facilities in our area. Sam Golski reports in the Standard Speaker that the manor at St. Luke's Village in Hazleton had a vaccination clinic on Monday and the pavilion at St. Luke's Village has one scheduled for Tuesday. He adds that manor care health services in Pottsville had a clinic just before the new year, as did Ridgeview Healthcare and Rehabilitation Center in Shenandoah. Back in Pottsville, there's another clinic scheduled for this week at Green Valley Skilled Nursing and Rehabilitation Center. This is all through a program with CVS Health and the state. A medical marijuana dispensary is now open in the Hazleton area, and our Janine Lasant has more information on Ethos Cannabis. Here's her interview with Ethos President David Clapper. off by talking about medical marijuana um, and educate our viewers on uh, the regulations and the rules. So the medical marijuana program in Pennsylvania in general has been around since 2016 and the Department of Health is the group that uh, manages and monitors the program and the uh, groups have been licensed beginning back in 2016 and throughout um, throughout currently there are still additional medical marijuana dispensaries being opened similar to what we have uh, opened recently in Hazleton. Uh, so as part of the program the Department of Health is uh, has created the medical marijuana program for patients that have a number of uh, certifying conditions. So there, I believe there's currently, Janine, 23 certifying conditions. Um, it started out, the program started out with, I believe, 18 and has increased over time as the Department of Health has uh, seen evidence that medical marijuana addresses certain, um, certain conditions uh, and, and, and helps to relieve the symptoms. So uh, the process is if somebody uh, believes that they have one of the certifying conditions, things like um, uh, cancer, um, if you're struggling with chemotherapy um, and, uh, and uh, the results that, that come with chemotherapy, that's one of the certifying conditions. Things like um, chronic pain, uh, uh, a variety of different things, Crohn's disease, um, anxiety is one in Pennsylvania, PTSD. So a number of conditions that, that, that the, the population has. If you have one of those conditions, um, you can look for a certifying physician in the state. So, so physicians register with the state to become part of the medical marijuana program. And when you go to the doctor, um, they can certify that you in fact have one of those conditions. Uh, after you're certified as having one of those conditions, you can apply with the state to receive a medical marijuana identification card. Uh, and after you have that card, then you're able to um, go into any dispensary in the state and purchase medical marijuana to address your conditions. Uh, you can talk with the doctor as to what the doctor believes may be helpful in terms of the type of medical marijuana, uh, but there are also pharmacists employed by every one of the dispensaries um, that are able to assist people if they're trying to understand exactly what type of medication. And when I say type, I mean, there are different forms of medical marijuana. So it could be something from um, capsules to tinctures to uh, an inhalable form of medical marijuana. Um, so there are different, uh, different dosages, different strains that people find effective for, for certain conditions. Um, in terms of the medical marijuana facilities themselves, they're very secure. Uh, again, regulated by the Department of Health. They have to be approved by the Department of Health prior to opening. Uh, and then they are subject to, to periodic inspections by the Department of Health. And there's a lot of internal reporting that, that we're required to do as part of the program um, to ensure the Department of Health that we're, um, we're uh, delivering medical marijuana to patients in a safe, um, uh, reliable manner. So for our purposes, uh, when, when a patient comes in, uh, for them to be able to get into the dispensary, you have to be a registered patient with the, with the program. Uh, there's also, and I won't get into the details you need, but for people that are unable to travel or it's difficult for them to get to a dispensary, they can use a caregiver. Uh, so in some case, if it's an elderly parent or an 
an elderly friend, they can specify a person who's a caregiver who on their behalf will get a card and is able to go in and purchase medical marijuana for them. So if you're a patient or a caregiver and you come into the dispensary, you'll show your identification card to the, um, to the, the people at the door, uh, to our, our um, security personnel, uh, and then you will come in and, and be checked into the, uh, the dispensary. Uh, if some of your viewers are concerned about safety around the dispensaries, um, the dispensaries require a lot of camera coverage, 24-hour um, monitoring of that. Uh, so uh, in terms of theft, we really see very, very little problems related to medical marijuana dispensaries. I believe they're, they're known throughout the state to be secure facilities with, uh, with guards and other things that are, that are monitoring them constantly. Very good. So you're now open in the um, Hazleton area hours. Uh, do you have any social media or website that people can go to for more information? We do. That's great. We're on Instagram. We're on uh, social media. Um, we have a website where people can look at it all under the ethos, uh, cannabis dispensary, um, logo. So if you look us up as ethos cannabis, you'll be able to find us on, on various social media outlets, uh, and on, uh, on our website as well. Today's news feature is brought to you by the cheese store and more. Go to their Facebook page to see their specials and check out their catering menu. Time now for weather on SSP TV news. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service on Wednesday. It's windy with wind gusts as high as 23 miles per hour, but it will be partly sunny with highs in the 30s. Wednesday night, mostly cloudy with lows in the 20s. Thursday is mostly sunny with highs in the mid 30s. Thursday night, mostly cloudy with lows in the 20s. Friday is partly sunny with highs in the 30s. Friday night, mostly cloudy with lows in the 20s. Saturday is mostly sunny with a high near 30 degrees. Saturday night, partly cloudy with lows in the teens. Coming up in the SSP TV Spotlight, singer Jack James entertains in a clip from the Sam LaSanne Show. Later in sports, we talk with three local athletes who will keep their athletic careers going in college. And right after this break, the one and only Ron Marchetti is back with Short Shots. He takes a look back at the year in sports when we come right back. Today we'd like to wish a happy birthday to Father Mike Cloten, pastor at Good Shepherd Parish and Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception Parish from your parishioners and all of us here at SSP TV. And that's today's Talk of the Town. SSP TV News would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Mary Pat Flatko of Freeland Services will be held at a later date under the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home. Ronald J. Hornick, Sr., age 55, of Drifton. A burial service will be held on Friday at 10 a.m. at St. Mary's Cemetery in New Coxville. The McNulty Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Joseph A. Marques, age 84, of Hazleton. Mass will be held on Friday at 10 a.m. at St. John Bosco Roman Catholic Church. Friends may call Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home. Carmen Joseph Marsit Sr., age 74, of Sun City, West Arizona, who passed away on December 20th. Services were previously held in Arizona. Emma Louise Paris, age 82, of Ebervale. Mass will be held on Wednesday at 10 a.m. at Our Lady of Grace Church. Friends may call today from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home. Harold C. Reinheimer, age 90, of Hazleton. Services will be private under the Crofton Hughes Funeral Home. Eleanor G. Sommets, age 92, of Hazleton. Services will be held at a later date under the Harmon Funeral Home. And Clara M. Wisniewski, age 87, of West Hazleton, who passed away on December 29th. Services were previously held under the Hillary J. Bonin Funeral Home. Today's social and obituary report is brought to you by Harmon Funeral Homes and Crematory. Call 570-788-0977 or go to harmonfuneral.com.